If you write a sentence and put brackets at either end of it, you've got your meaty piece in the middle and then the brackets on either side. They kind of frame it up, a bit like I'm bracketed at the moment by this arch of the piano. In photography, it is pretty much the same. You can bracket your exposures, your white balance, and your flash. You can even combine a couple of those things together. But why would you want to do it? Well, let's say in the case of exposure, you've got some very bright highlights and some quite dark areas. By bracketing when you shoot it, you're taking anything from sort of three to five to nine exposures, all very slightly different, which will help you find the correct one because your light meter can get confused. Rather than standing here talking about it, it's probably better if I show you how to go about it. So here's a shot I prepared earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. I've chosen to do this with an interior shot because there's lots of stuff going on. We've got quite bright light coming in from over here and we've got these highlights from these bulbs. We've got a window over there. We've got bar lights over there. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on. There's gonna be some pools of shade and some pools of brightness. So let's have a look at exposure bracketing first. How do you set it up? I don't know which camera you've got, so you will have to go and look in your book, exposure bracketing, and find out how you switch it on and off. On a D300 Nikon like this one, you go into the menu, you then scroll to the custom settings menu and then down to bracketing and flash. You go into that, it's a bit of a dig, into auto bracketing set. Now when I bring it across, you can see we've got auto exposure and flash, auto exposure only, flash only, and white balance bracketing. I'm just gonna show you auto exposure first. So I'm gonna select that by pressing okay. Now it's set into the camera. The next place I have to go is to tell the bracketing what I want it to do. So for example, you could have uh, just it shoot one shot at the correct exposure and then one either side of that, or maybe two either side of that, which gives you five shots or nine in total all the way across. On this camera, I just press the little FN button, which is it's a tiny little button down at the front, just down there. I press that. Turn the light on because I'm getting a bit old and blind. I can't see things when they're dark. <laughs> Press that button and then using the front command dial, sorry, the back command dial. <laughs> you can tell I don't use this very often, can't you? I do tend to do this manually. But anyway, using the rear command dial, I can choose how I want to do it. So for example, I'm just going to set it into five frames. That's the 5F. The number next to it is how much difference in exposure I want between each shot. I'm going to turn the front dial here from 0.5, which is half a stop, to 1, which is a full stop. So I'm going to have a shot that's two stops underexposed, one that's one stop underexposed, one that's correctly uh, exposed, and then one over, and then two stops over. I'm shooting in aperture priority. I'm just going to do this on an auto mode. If you're shooting manually, then you can bracket yourself just by changing your shutter speed or something. Because it's an interior, I'm using a small aperture of f16 because I want lots and lots of depth of field. I'm also going to use auto white balance, and I'll speak a bit more about that in a moment. Right, so we're all set. The shot's set up. The camera's focused. I'm only going to shoot JPEGs. I would normally fiddle about with RAW files, but just so you know I'm doing this for real, I'm going to shoot JPEGs. So what the camera's going to do is take five shots. Each time I press the shutter, it will take another shot at a different exposure. Some cameras, you can set it onto the fast frame mode, and then it will go, like, do it automatically, one, two, three, four, five. These exposures are going to be quite slow because I'm using F16 and we're indoors. So, Janie, if you could move that way a bit so you're not in shot. There we go. I think you're safe there. Yeah, you are. Just wait for your man. Can I, sorry about that. I just need you out of the way for a moment. Thank you. Right, so that's nice and clear. The room's ready. I'm using a cable release so I can't make the camera wobble. Right, why didn't that work? I don't know why that didn't work. No, it's because the autofocus is struggling. It's because it's on an area where there isn't much contrast. Right, that's... I put it onto manual focus and now I know it'll work. Here we go. First shot. Can you hear the change in shutter speed? They're getting longer and longer. And the next one's going to be very long indeed because we're now making a much brighter exposure. That shutter, there you go, it just closed again. As you flick between them, you can see there is an enormous difference between each exposure. 
where it's really dark, the window's probably correctly exposed. And as it gets brighter, the window is blowing out, but the chairs and things look quite nice. It's a question of finding a place between them. Now, maybe if I've been a little bit more subtle with it and just gone half stop increments, there'd probably be an exposure in there somewhere, which pretty much works for everywhere. But never mind, I think you get the idea. You can also do this with a flash. So you could, let's just go into the menu, bracketing and flash into there, auto bracketing set. I could bracket the flash only. That means I'm gonna set a manual exposure and then the camera will set different flash exposures each time I take a shot. I don't think you need to see me do that because it works the same way as the bracketing we've just done. It's very warm in here. Excuse me, dripping. Menu. Bracketing and flash. Get there in a minute, here we go. But I do want to show you auto exposure and flash. This is gonna do different available light exposures, auto exposures, and it's gonna fire a flash at corresponding fill-in exposures. Now, why on earth would you want to do that? Oh, the camera's just gone dead. Let me just go back in and switch it on. There we go. Okay, good. In here, we've got all sorts of different light going on. And I'll talk to you more about the light, uh, the white balance bracketing in a moment. But we've also got a darker area behind these chairs here. Well, the little pony puff of flash could just lift these shadows. Flash will also have an impact on the colors because flash is one color. These things are a different color. I don't want to get you confused there. I'm going into different territories. Let's just stick with the bracketing. If you want to know more about white balance, go and watch a white balance film. <coughs> Right, so we're all set up. It's exactly the same method. I go into the function menu. How many frames do I want? I'm gonna stick with five, so that's a correctly exposed one. Two shots under, two shots over. Instead of going a full stop difference, I'm gonna change this to a half stop difference so that the difference between the shots is a lot more subtle. Now I'm working on also white balance. I think I may have just said that because in these mixed lighting circumstances, the auto can often come up with a better result. If I was doing this as a proper commercial job, I'd shoot a raw and use a white balance card and I'd do it afterwards, but hey ho, that's not for everyone. Are you in shot? Janie, your elbow's in shot. Thank you, that's better. Right, so pop the flash up. If you don't pop the flash up, it's not gonna work, is it? So here we go, the same thing's gonna happen. First shot. Uh, you have to wait for the flash to recharge. Second shot. It hasn't recharged yet. Third shot. Can you hear the shutter speed getting longer as well? Just got to wait a moment. Fourth, I think. And one more. Long, slow one. There we go. As we scroll between them, you can see there are slight differences in exposure and the flash is just slightly, it's just subtly lifting this area behind the chairs. Now I wouldn't recommend doing a shot like this with full power flash. It's much better to bracket either side of the correct exposure. But what do I mean by correct exposure? This is what the camera meters and decides is the correct exposure. Whether or not it is correct is a moot point because if you've got a very, very bright highlight, let's say that window at the other end of the room here had tons of sunlight right behind it, your light meter might see that and get completely confused and make the picture too dark. When I say correct exposure, I mean the metered exposure. So there we go. Nice it is a night. You said you didn't want to be in a film. There you go. You're on film now. Oh, no. <laughs> He's been hiding all morning. So there we go. Right. So that's exposure and exposure and flash bracketing. Let's go and have a look at white balance bracketing. That's got the shot set up. Splendid. So why have I moved over here to show you white balance bracketing? White balance is all to do with the color temperature, with the color of the light in a room. Out here, you've got blue colored daylight going on. But as you come into the room, this end is being lit by that daylight coming through the conservatory. And this end is being lit by the yellow colored tungsten, which is around the bar area. And this will probably be really noticeable across this wall. This end of the wall will be a bluey color. And as we move this way, it's gonna start going yellow. There is no correct, in inverted commas, call it bracketed if you like, 
white balance for in here because there are two different colour temperatures. All you can do is try and find a place between the two that works and looks really nice. Right, I've got my shot set up. How do we set the white balance bracketing? Go into the menu. It's all in the menu. I hate going into menus. Bracketing and flash in the custom settings. Scroll down to bracketing set. White balance bracketing. Press OK. White balance bracketing works slightly differently on this camera to the exposure bracketing. Instead of me having to take five shots, all I have to do is take one shot and then in JPEG mode, the camera is going to produce five different images all at different color temperatures. I switch it on just the same way as I did before by pressing the function button, choosing how many frames I want. I want five frames. There is a number at the top here, which is kind of showing me how far apart I want them to be. I just want to make sure I have got, sorry, white balance bracketing set. Yes, I have. Okay. The difference between the colors is measuring what's called a MyRed shift. Now, I'm not going to go into details about what that is, because to be honest with you, I'm not completely sure. If you're someone who just has to know, go and check it out on Google. I bet there's pages and pages of it. Function button. I'm going to do five frames, and I'm going to make the difference between shots as much as I can. You could have a one, which will be a subtle little difference, a two, which will be more, and a three, which is a lot. So I'm going to leave it with a lot. Right, again, I'm going to use the auto white balance because I think that will kind of average this stuff out a bit better. So now all we need to do is to take our shot. Janie, you're in shot. I need to refocus the camera from over there. I'm just going to focus on the back of those chairs right in front of me there because that should give me plenty. I'm still using a very, very small aperture. You're going to be photographed again in a minute. Oh, am I? Yeah. I'm just going to wait for him. I suppose he's the, I think he's the general manager or a manager. What's your position? Manager. Restaurant manager. Restaurant manager. There we go. I knew it was something like that. Right, here we go. Again, I'm using my cable release because I don't want to wobble the camera. So now all I have to do is take one shot. It's a long, slow exposure. And the camera, there's a little light flashing on and off just here as the camera processes each one out at a different color temperature. Now as we flick between them, I think actually that yellowier one looks quite good because the wall at this end is the right color. But as we go towards the cooler end, it's starting to go really quite blue. So there you go, that's how you would do bracketing for both exposures, exposure and flash, and for your white balance. When would you use it? That's a great question. Very, very useful if you're into HDR. Uh, suppose you've got a place where there is a huge exposure difference. The range is massive. So outside we've got all that brightness and inside we've got something much darker. If you wanted to try and capture what's going on between the two, an HDR image would be great. Now you need to shoot them quickly because light changes. So if you have your auto exposure bracketing on, put the camera on a tripod, shoot off five or nine frames, all at different exposures, you can then create an HDR image using the exposure for the dark areas overlaid with the exposure for the bright areas. You kind of blend the two together and you can buy software that will do that. So there we go. I hope that helps you understand bracketing.